Main Street history. Original Main Streets, as we know, predate cars. The shops were small and the owners either lived above them or they lived near them. They were part of the neighborhood. They met with the other shop owners. They met with them at the pub. They met with them at church. They met with them in the grocery store. They knew each other. They worked together, but they actually worked together in ways that were more informal than formal. The shopping districts were active, they were pretty, and they were purposeful. And I want to stop there for a minute on pretty, because it is possible to say Vine Street in its heyday, when there was a saloon every 40 feet, might not have appeared to be all that pretty. But people are an element that make a retail district pretty, in a sense. Busyness. We're going to use pretty here for appealing. In, in a historic sense. They were appealing because they were places that were full of people and full of things that people wanted. Pretty nowadays has to be used in a different way. But they were active, they were pretty, they were purposeful. People walked to them to get there. And they walked home with whatever they got there, which meant that they took, they got what they could carry in two hands on foot. So we had a much more European shopping pattern. And the feet were those of the people and the horses. Um, and there were multiple smaller sites. I mean, if you just, we'll use our own over the ride. There was shopping on Vine, there was less shopping on Walnut, there was a lot of shopping on Main Street again, there was less shopping on Sycamore. But there were retail districts peppered throughout your neighborhoods, smaller and larger, some cases just corner stores, because I was going to go and get what I could walk home with. Um, and the clustering in that way protected the retailers. Again, they knew each other, they worked together, they knew what was going on, and the fact that there were five or six or eight or ten shops meant that I could go there and accomplish three or four or five objectives in a single trip. And that clustering was crucial. And you see clustering. We never went away from clustering. Kenwood Town Center is heavily clustered. Um, streetcar, which was probably our first example of transit-oriented development. We tend to think that we're so smart and we've invented so much new stuff. Streetcar stops were transit-oriented developments. People lived around streetcar stops, they lived around streetcar lines, because that was the new form of transit. We're going to have streetcar again. We still see commerce at major, at major transit interchanges, and we talked about the fact that Kenwood Town Center is positioned partly where it is, because the road grid accessing it is so good. Um, they were still walkable after streetcars because you were still going to walk home from your streetcar. Cars enabled escape. Starting in about 1950 and progressively, once you had a car, you could go any place. And part of the reason people did go any place initially is because of that very simple reason. They could. I remember being 18 or 19 years old, 20 years old, getting a car and actually thinking to myself, I can go any place. I can go to the movies tonight if I want. So when you first got a car, it was exciting to think, I don't have to shop at Sam's. I can go to the next neighborhood over and shop at Bob's. Wow, and I don't have to worry about carrying everything home. I can load it in the car. So the first thing, the first impetus for leaving the neighborhood to shop was just the excitement that you could. But then, of course, once you leave the boundaries of your neighborhood, because you can, you discover enticements that might, you might want to repeat. You discover shops that have merchandise that you couldn't get. You discover that there are other delights out there that you can now access because of your car, which meant that streetcar districts lost their demand driver, which was people getting off the streetcar and walking home. And walkability lost its focus and importance and America became a country of fat car drivers. And once you're in your car, of course, you can go anywhere. You can go absolutely anywhere. You can go to Kenwood Town Center. You don't need to get a shirt down the street because they might have a better or a different shirt. And at that point, shopping centers also became a different kind of experience. They became less utilitarian. They became more entertainment. But in my view, they also became less connected. Because when I was rocking down the street shopping, I was running into all my friends. 
I was saying hello. I was seeing who was going in or out of some place. I was finding out if there were lamb chops today. Now that I go to Ten Kenwood Town Center, there, I don't have those 10,000 people who are there right now as my friends. I go in, I shop in isolation. I might shop with Kathy and I might say, let's go. I shop with the one person I go with. Um, or Pat might join us. So now we've got three people. We might get some lunch. But it's not the same as, as interacting with each other on the street. And out of that isolation came a number of negative things. It changed our whole perception of society. It changed our whole perception of who mattered to us and who was, who was different or frightening or odd to us because we weren't bumping up against each other every day on the streetcar, in the shops, on the streets. We did not necessarily benefit from the isolation imposed by cars. And certainly, our neighborhoods did not benefit from that because once you're in your car, you can go anywhere. People now can do what they want, where they want, when they want. 